Welcome to the first art class video. In this episode we're going to be looking at how I paint one of my night landscapes on paper and the paint I'm going to be using is Holbein Acryla Gouache and this is one of my favourite paints. I love the textures I can achieve with it, I love the fact that I can layer it and you're going to be seeing all of that as I share my process with you throughout this video. As you can see here, I've chosen a limited palette of blues with black, white and a couple of browns as well, just to add a bit of warmth and a bit of contrast. I probably won't use all of these paints, but I like to have a bit of a selection. I'll also be using a ceramic palette to mix the colours, we'll talk a bit more about that later. Three different paint brushes and I'll tell you more about those too. And there's a pencil here so that I can sketch the basic composition before I start. I very rarely, if ever, do a detailed sketch before I start a painting. I usually just lightly sketch out onto the paper or the canvas the very basic composition where the different elements are going to be and um, I sometimes like to play around with those a bit as we go through the painting process. So I just like to have a very general idea just to check that the composition works. I usually start at the top of the painting and work downwards because I find that with this paint in particular if you paint the lower parts and then you need to paint the top part you're leaning on the paint and sometimes that can mark it because this paint dries very very matte so any marks will really show up it probably isn't so much of a problem with other paints but with this one in particular it is here I'm mixing three different colours to make a midnight blue for the sky. This is going to be a very deep colour, so I'm using lamp black, a little bit of titanium white and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I just keep mixing until I reach the desired colour. When I add this to the paper, as I'm doing here, you can see it looks almost black. But I'm going to be working in layers, so I start with the darkest layer first and then gradually get lighter. The paper I'm working on here is a Bockingford 250 pound heavyweight watercolour paper. This is perfect for this kind of painting and also if you want to work quite wet because it's heavy enough that it won't buckle. Um, this is one of my favourite papers and it's actually quite an affordable one as well. This surface I'm working on, this is the knot surface which means it's somewhere between hot pressed which is a really smooth paper and a rough watercolour paper so it kind of has just the right amount of texture and I use this texture to my advantage in my painting because I actually work in sort of downward strokes. You can see that here quite clearly and I'm always going from top to bottom and as you can see it sort of leaves a little bit of the textured paper showing through. So as I add the extra layers it means that the ones beneath show through a little bit and this is how I get a really interesting textured look to my works on paper and also it gives it a lot of depth as well. One thing to note about this paint is that it can look a bit patchy when it's drying but it's okay because it will dry really nice and evenly and as I said before very matte. And it dries very quickly too, it's usually dry within just a few minutes which makes it excellent for layering. So here I'm filling in the mountains, I'm marking those out and filling those in with the black base coat. So um, I usually work from a dark to light and I'll often start with a black base. You can actually get black watercolour paper, I found this out the other month and I've since bought some so that will kind of cut down on this stage. <laughs> 
but generally I like to mark things out in black first so the black always shows through a little bit and sometimes around the edges say around the edges of the mountains for example I'm actually using a De La Rowney graduate brush here. Now this is one of their cheaper ranges of brushes, but I found them to be really good for um, both acrylic and for gouache painting. And they seem to last for ages and they don't cost very much. They're only like, I think around £2.50, something like that, which I think is really good. this stage the sky had had I think it was two layers of paint and so I decided it was time to mark in where the moon was going to be so I marked that in in black and then I decided to mix up the paint for one of the mountains and I used a little bit of turquoise blue and decided it looked just a bit too green so I got the navy blue and a bit more black and just um, darkened it a little bit made it slightly more bluish, slightly cooler colour. Sometimes the turquoise seems to work in these landscapes and sometimes it doesn't. And in this one, I just felt like it needed to be a slightly different colour. So you can see that I'm applying the paint in the same way again where I'm just using short strokes and I also don't have too much paint on my brush when I'm doing this. It's not really a dry brush technique, um, but I do make sure that I don't pick up too much paint and I also don't use too much water with it either, so it's really quite thick. I mean, I can always water it down a little bit. I just add a little bit of water from my water jar, which is out of shot on this footage. If I find I've got too much paint on my brush, I will just use a bit of kitchen paper or sometimes a scrap piece of paper and I'll just do a couple of strokes on that just to get rid of any excess. So that's kind of one of the techniques I use for getting this nice texture is not to have too much paint on your brush because then it kind of glides over the top and leaves some of that lovely texture and the black beneath showing and that's what you need in order to get this look. gradually adding the lighter layers here so I'm taking the paint that I already have mixed up in the palette and I'm just adding a little bit of white each time to make each consecutive layer slightly lighter than the one beneath it. I sometimes hold the painting up to really check to see how the layers have dried and it was at this stage that I noticed that the sky actually needed a third layer of paint. So I turned it upside down and I went back to the midnight blue that I'd mixed up earlier and I just decided to do a third layer of paint over the top and this just evened out the slight streakiness. the way I have a little tip for you and that's to always use a ceramic palette with the acrylic gouache paints. I don't know whether it's the same for other acrylic gouache but the acrylic gouache um, by Holbein I've used a plastic palette before with these and it was a nightmare to clean it 
the paint seems to weld itself to the palette um, whereas it doesn't do that with the ceramic palettes so you can just basically clean those off really easily I just soak them in um, soapy water for a few minutes and the paint just lifts off but it wasn't the case with the plastic palette so I would say definitely use a ceramic palette You've probably figured out why I have a piece of scrap paper under the painting on one side. Um, that's just to protect the table, really. I don't really want to get my um, table completely covered in paint. It has got a bit of paint on it, but I do try to keep it relatively clean. So, um, yeah, when I'm painting to the edge of the paper like this and there's no border, I just put that underneath so that any excess paint just goes onto that. I've turned the painting upside down again here so I can work on the moon without leaning on the rest of the painting. Um, I work on the moon in the same way as I work on the other pieces where I just add layer by layer, um, gradually getting lighter and leaving some of the black showing through so that the moon has a little bit of a shadow on the bottom there. And I also use sometimes a Posca pen. This is a Posca paint pen and I found that they're really useful for doing the stars because you can get a very nice little point. So yeah, my tip would be to use a white Posca pen if you want to do stars. It's great for that. <laughs> 
so here I'm starting to mark out where the little house will be. I'm using the black paint again and I'm also using a really tiny paintbrush for this. This is the brush I use for pretty much all of my details. Um, it's a Pro Art Pro Lean Series 101 round brush and I use a size 30, <laughs> so it's really tiny. It has a super fine point and they do seem to last for a long time if you take care of them, rinse them out properly and dry them properly. Um, I may do a video on how to care for brushes actually because some of mine last for a long time. But yeah, they're not very expensive. They're a little bit more pricey than the De La Rowney graduate brush from earlier. But um, yeah, they're still a very inexpensive brush, especially for the quality. These brushes are great for doing the tiny trees as well. And here I'm filling in the white of the house and marking out where the windows will go and so on. Another tip I have for you is actually to not squeeze too much paint out of the tube if you're working with acrylic gouache because unlike normal gouache it can't be re-wet so once it's dried on the palette it's dry and you can't re-wet it and um, I've made the mistake in the past of squeezing out quite a lot of paint and not using it all before it's dried and so it's such a waste of paint but um, yeah so that would be my tip is just to only squeeze out as much paint as you think you're going to use you can keep it wet for a little bit longer if you remember to spray it with some water or if you just take a bit of water from your water jar and mix it in with the paint on the palette um, if you keep it wet it's not too bad but the moment you forget that <laughs> it will dry and I certainly noticed in warmer weather it dries really quite quickly so just bear that in mind when you're using it. To paint the chimney smoke you need to have very little paint on your brush so just have the minimum amount and just lightly brush over the surface of the paper and um, it will give you a lovely wispy smoky effect. Mm -hmm. 
real time it takes me many hours to work on a painting like this because of the numerous layers and then all of the details so you have the details with the moon and the stars and the little trees the trees always take such a long time and the fine lines that I add to the landscape as well and obviously the little house with the tiled roof and everything just takes so much time so what you're seeing in a 22 minute video probably took a good four or five hours of work even on something quite small they can often take longer if they're larger pieces um, but yeah generally it would be about four to five hours for a piece this size So we're nearing the completion of the painting now. I hope you've enjoyed this first art class. Please let me know in the comments below if there's anything you think I could improve upon or something you'd like to see next time. I mean, any comments you have, any feedback is great because this is very new to me. I hope you've enjoyed this in-depth look at my process. I've really enjoyed sharing it with you. So thank you for watching and I'll be back next month with another art class.